It is freezing cold out here. I am starting to put on multiple jackets. <laughs> Anyways, school safety. School safety, and I'm not talking about our schools. I am talking about fish schools. Why do fish swim in a school? And have you ever sat and watched them swim in a school? It's really cool to watch them swim in schools because they all move at the same time and they all make the same movements. And when they do that and you watch them from afar, it actually looks like it's a big, huge animal. It doesn't look like a little tiny fish. There's so many of the little fish and they're all swimming and they're making the, the, the light jump off of their scales in such a way that it actually looks like a huge animal. And it tricks their predators, doesn't it? When they look really big, they are much more of a mouthful than you could ever fit in your mouth. So go find something else is the idea. So it's believed that fish swim together, not only to protect them from predators, but also to improve the ability for them to find food and catch it. And also they swim together because it's more efficient. If there's a lot of them moving together, they can cut through the water and the currents kind of come off of them. It's a lot like the reason why birds fly together and they kind of make that V in the sky is they're cutting through the currents of wind. Well, the fish can do the same thing as they school together. It really helps them work their way through their environment. So what does school safety have to do with devotional and God? Well, it's a very interesting thought about why he made us the way he did and that he gave us something called the church. See, when we come to know Jesus Christ, he doesn't expect us to just try to live our Christian life all alone. No, he gives us the church. And the church, when we swim together, it actually helps us. It keeps us safe from predators, from Satan, our great advocate. Not only does it protect us, but it helps give us the nutrients that we need, the food. We're able to spiritually speaking, be fed and grow in our walk with God because we're growing together. We're moving together. It helps us to minister better because we're in the same motions and we're working together on the project. And lastly, it helps us make it through this environment that we're living in. Last time we did a devotional, we talked about the shark attack and we said, hey, when you're in the salt water of an ocean, expect sharks. They live there. And I told you, hey, you're living in this world of darkness where Satan is its ruler. Expect to get attacked. All right, but when we live in fellowship with other believers, we have protection against the evil one that we would not have if we were trying to walk alone. Hebrews 10, 22 through 25 says it this way. It says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. The very next verse says this, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds and not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, when we live together in unity, we can actually spur or encourage one another on in the ways that God wants us to live. And when we're alone, we don't have that same encouragement. First Corinthians 12, 12, 26 and 27 also goes on with this concept and it says, it, call, it says that we're, we're part of a body. Well, if you think about it, a body has to move together. It wouldn't work if my right foot decided to go left and my left foot decided to go right. I would fall over, right? Everything has to work together as the body for me to move, for me to run and to do anything that I want to do, even feed myself. My body has to work together on that. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, um, 12, 26, and 27, it kind of talks to us about the body of Christ being like the body. It says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. 
Now you're the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So the idea of being a part of the body is being in fellowship with other Christians and feeling what they're feeling and helping them with the struggles that they have and them helping us with the struggles that we have. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. I love that. See, when we live in community, even right here in the class that you're taking, you have Christian community. You have brothers and sisters around you. And if you live in such a way to build each other up, then you find the encouragement that you need. So, so here's the thing. We can, we can school together for safety's sake with many different people, right? We could school together with other Christians, or we could school together with whoever we chose as friends, right? Whether they're Christians or not. But what happens if I'm schooling together with people who are living in the darkness? They don't live the way God tells us to live. And they're confusing what is right and what is wrong. Well, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. The truth is, if I am walking in the world with those who are in darkness and they're blind and they don't know right from wrong, it will corrupt my character. There's a couple more verses that give us more um, wisdom. In Proverbs 16, 29, it says, A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. So God is warning us in, his, in the wisdom of Scripture who we should school with. Should we school with violence? No, we should not. What happens if we choose to school with bad company? We're going to become corrupt. And then Psalms 26, 4 through 5, it says, I did not sit with liars, and I will not be found among hypocrites. I have hated the mob of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked people. So guys, there are the mob of evildoers, people who are lying, people who are hypocrites. If I school with them, it is not a good situation to be in. And I will find a shark coming by um, to devour me or the roaring lion, Satan. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25 says, Do not be a friend of one who has a bad temper and never keep company with a hothead or you will learn his ways and set a trap for yourself. Hmm, that's a good one to know. So bad temper, not a good person to spend time with. Hothead, hmm, I don't want to become one. I shouldn't school with them. Now, you can be schooling or fellowshipping with Christians but, the, but you need to be wise because just because somebody claims to be a Christian doesn't mean that they are worthy of having you in their school. In other words, sometimes even in the church, we can find people that are leading us astray. It says in 1 Corinthians 5.11, Now what I meant was that you should not associate with people who call themselves brothers or sisters in the Christian faith, but live in sexual sin, are greedy, worship false gods, use abusive language, get drunk, or are dishonest. Don't eat with such people. The idea here that he's saying is, hey, be aware of who you school with. And the idea of who you fellowship with, who is it that you're swimming in synchronized movements with? Because you will be synchronized with them. Whoever it is you hang out with, you become like. Just like those fish, they get to the point where they know each other so well that they're following every single movement of each other. And if you're following every single movement of somebody who's dishonest, gets drunk, uses abusive language, worships false gods, is greedy, is sexually immoral, that's what will define who you are because you're going to be moving, synchronized swimming with them. Okay? So we want to school safely with Christians because when we do, we find help to move more like Jesus Christ. See you next week.